Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's time to pray. Amen. Let's begin to give thanks to the Lord. Let's worship Him. Let's give Him thanks for another time. You know, to fellowship with Him. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Em pronto sotolo branda Oh, thank you, Jesus. Le pranda shapa ba 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 ba. Oh, raprando soto lo prana kate. Oh, thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Oh, shapa nda klasi kate le kate 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 kate. Thank you Lord for what you'll be doing in here today. Oh, thank you Jesus for your word that we will receive. Oh, thank you Jesus because it's entering our hearts in the name of Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Le pranda sekate. Rapanda shapa ba 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 le prando soto lo prana katele gede 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 ro prando shapa ba 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 e prando soto lo prana katele gede 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 La prande shaka tele prada gate in pro do soto lo prana gatele gede 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 ra panda shapa ba 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 e prando soto lo prana gatele gede 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 ra ketele prana ka shaka tele gede gede e prando soto lo prana gatele gede 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 ra prando shaka tele gede 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 ra prando shapa ba 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 thank him thank him thank him Oh, shapa da ba da da te. E prando soto lo branda katele gede 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 gede. Re katele branda klasche katele gede 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 gede. Le prando shapa ba 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 ba. E prando soto lo branda katele gede 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 gede. Online and on site, thank the Lord, thank the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Le prando shapa ba 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 ba. E prando soto lo branda katele gede 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 gede. Re katele branda kashe katele gede gede gede. Le prando soko tolo branda katele gede 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 gede. Re prando shapa ba 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 ba. E prando se katele gede 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 gede. Lord, thank you for another opportunity to receive of you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Le pranda shapa ba 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 ba. E prando soto lo rana katele gede 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 gede. Re prando shaka tele gede 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 gede. Because I'm receiving all that you have for me today. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Because I'm receiving all that you have for me today. Thank you, Jesus. Le prando shapa ba 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 ba. Le prando sakata la brada gate, em prando shapa ba 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 ba, e prato soko tolo brada gate, le 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 le, re prando shapa ba 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 ba, e prando soko tolo brada gate, le 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 le, re prando shapa ba 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 ba, e prando sata la brada gate, le 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 pranda shapa, e prando soto lo prana gate. A ra prando shapa ba 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 ba. E prando soto lo prana gate. Le 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 le. Ra pranda shapa ba 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 ba. E la prando soto lo prana gate. Le 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 le. Amen. Let's open our Bibles to Isaiah fifty verse four. Amen. 
says, the Lord God had given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakened me morning by morning. He wakened my hair to hear as the learned. And verse 5, he says, the Lord God had opened my hair, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. Amen. Hallelujah. So we'll be praying that we receive God's word as the learned. Amen. We are receiving God's word as the learned. That we are not rebellious towards God's word. In the name of Jesus. Pray. Our hearts are open to receive everything in the name of Jesus. Oh, the Lord is speaking to us today. In the name of Jesus, Leprando Secatele Pradagatele Rapanda Shapa Baba Baba Baba. There is no confusion in our mind. We receive God's word as a learned. In the name of Jesus, Lapranda Secatele Rapanda Shapa Baba 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 we are receiving God's word with clarity. We are receiving God's word with clarity in the name of Jesus. Oh, shapa rakate le prana kate le gede 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 rapanda shapa ba 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 e prando soto lo prana kate le gede 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 rapanda shapa ba 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 e prando sekete le prana kate le gede 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 Le pranda shapa ba 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 ba. E pranda sata la prana gatela gada gada ba. A ra prando shaka tele prana gatela gada 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 gada. Re pranda shapa ba 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 ba. E prando shaka tele prana gatela gada gada gada. Amen. Do you believe God's word makes you better? Do you believe God's word makes you better? So you will pray today, and I am changed in the name of Jesus. I get better. Even as I receive God's word today, and I am changed in the name of Jesus. Pray, pray, pray. Shakatala prana gatele prana gate. Raprando sotolo prana gatele gede 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 gede. Le prata shapa ba 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 ba. E prando sotolo prana gatele gede 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 gede. A prando shapa prana gatele gede 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 gede. E kasotolo prana gate. Rakatala panda kashapa ba 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 ba. E katando logoto. Em prando I'm getting better as a result of today's teaching in the name of Jesus. I'm getting better. I am changed in the name of Jesus. Le pronto socoto. Le pranda shapa ba 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 ba. E pranda sakata la brada gate. Rakata la pata kata la brada gata la gata brada gata. E prando shapa la gate le gede 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 gede. Oh shapa la gate le brada gate. Ara prando soto lo brada gate le gede 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 gede. Rakata la brada. E prando shapa la gata. E prando soto lo brada gate le gede 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 g
la panda kla shege tele gede 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 ando seke tele bara gede 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 ora panda shaka tala gede 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 le panda shapa ba 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 e prando sotolo bara gede tele gede 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 re prando shapa ba 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 e prando sokotolo bara gata e prando shaka tala prande gete ra pando shaka tala bara gata tele gede 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 gete e prando shapa ba 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 o shaka tala bara gata o shaka tala bara gata Lord, thank the Lord, thank the Lord. Shabala bara di gudu gudu, shugudu gudu. Riba ba 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 ba. Shabara diza. Kada bala bara di gusu gudu, shige de gede. Radi la bara di gusu, rodo gudu, shibara bandes, kala bandes. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your truth. We thank you for your truth. In the name of Jesus, because we are changed by your word, because we are changed by your truth. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Sala baradi zagida baradi gazi re ba 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 she ba di gorudo she gede gede re ba la bandes re ba 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 ba. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. May I have your seat. Um, it's going to be a very brief teaching meeting. Hallelujah. We are looking at supernatural supply, and Pastor has over the week laid some foundation for our study. Amen. And if you see the emphasis Pastor has had over the week, he has emphasized on the will of God, the ability of God. Amen. So um, last week, Pastor began to, you know, further lay more emphasis on. Not just his ability, but his willingness to supply need. Amen. So our God is not just able, he is willing. And in, within this willingness of our God is something very peculiar. I want you to go to the book of um, Psalms chapter 136. There's something about the willingness of God. Um... You see there, it says, Give thanks unto the Lord for his good, for his mercies endureth forever. O oh, give thanks unto the God of gods for his mercies endureth forever. O oh, give thanks to the Lord of Lord for his mercies endureth forever. To him who alone doeth great wonders for his mercies endureth forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens for his mercies endureth forever. To him that stretched out the earth above the waters for his mercies endureth forever. To him that made great lights, for his mercies endureth forever. The sun to rule by day, for his mercies endureth forever. The moon and the stars to rule by night, for his mercies endureth forever. To him that smote Egypt in, in their firstborn, for his mercies endureth forever. And brought out Israel from among them, for his mercies endureth forever. With a strong hand and with, an, with a stretched out arm, for his mercies endureth forever. To him which divided the Red Sea into parts, for his mercies endureth forever. And made Israel to pass through the midst of it, for his mercies endured forever. But overthrew the Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea, for his mercies endured forever. To him which led his people through the wilderness, for his mercies endured forever. To him which smote the great kings, for his mercies endured forever. And slew famous kings, for his mercies endured forever. Sehon, king of the Amorites, for his mercies endured forever. And all the king of Bashan, for his mercies endured forever. And gave their land. For an heritage for his mercies endured forever, even an heritage unto Israel, his servant for his mercies endured forever, who remembered us in our low estate for his mercies endured forever, and had redeemed us from our enemies for his mercies endured forever, who giveth food to all flesh for his mercies endured forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven for his mercies endured forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you go to the book of Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 4, at some point I felt people just, <laughs> just left. Because it was a long list of what God's mercy can accomplish. Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 4. The Bible says, But God who is rich in mercy for his great love 
wherewith he loved us. Amen. You know, when we came into... Hallelujah. Amen. I think this is out. Hallelujah. The devil is a liar. Amen. Hallelujah. So, um, okay, so we read the book of Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us. Amen. If you go to the book of um, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. From verse 4. The Bible says, Who condemn which are in trouble? Okay, let me read from verse 3. Say, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Father of what? Of mercy. And the God of all comfort. Amen. Say the Father of mercy. Amen. So, you know, when we came into the when we came into knowledge, um, when we got to understand that God has forgiven our sins, we we met the Christocentric doctrine. Some of us now took, you know, the Bible says that knowledge proofs up, right? But faith what? Does what? Faith edifies. Amen. So knowledge will give you a certain pride in your heart. And there was this pride that sometimes even when people want to, like people say, Lord, have mercy on me. You look at them weird and like, no, God has already had mercy on you. Amen. You know, because the Bible says that we are, we are, you know, we are children of mercy. God has called us. We are children of mercy. God has forgiven our sins. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so whenever someone speaks about, oh, I, you know, I am desiring the mercy of God, or I, I ask God for mercy, it will look as though the person is, you know, the person lacks knowledge. Amen. But we see in the book of Psalms, chapter 136, that everything that God did, even what we, what we saw that um, Moses did, the demonstration of the faith of Moses, amen. Naturally, we would have said it's, it's just Moses' demonstration of faith. But the Bible says that he parted the Red Sea. That means it was God that parted the Red Sea, not independent of the faith of Moses. And why did he do it? Because the Bible says his mercies endures forever, amen. Go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4 from verse 15. The Bible says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all point tempted like as we are, yet without sin. The Bible now says from verse 16, Let us come therefore boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Amen. You know, human life is very complex. And this is why I'm not, you know, I'm not just saying this because I have, I'm saying it. I'm saying it because in my life, personally, I've examined my life and I've seen the mercy of God. Amen. And for the past few weeks, I've been meditating on the mercy of God. Hallelujah. You see, there are many victories in our lives we cannot orchestrate. Amen. There are, you know, Pastor mentioned last week that you should get to a point in your faith story or your faith walk where you will now say, I don't know what happened. Amen. I don't know what happened. I knew that I, I, I knew I, I signed off. I knew I took these courses. I knew I learned this. I knew I, I registered for this. I paid for this. I knew I got this gadget. But I don't know how this kind of opportunity came. Amen. We should be able to get to that point in our faith story where we are unable to tell what happened. Amen. That is what faith is about. That's what the Christian life is about. 
Amen. You know what? I, I, I took time to study what makes the Christian faith different from other religion. It's not just the power that we have. Amen. Other religions have a certain level of power. Amen. If, you, if, you go, if, you, if I take you to my village, <laughs> you will see a certain level of power. Amen. They will do things. They will hold rain. That means there is power even in, in, in the devil with them. Amen. But there is something they don't have that our God has. They don't have the mercy of God. Amen. They don't have that mercy. And what distinguishes the Christian faith from other religions is the mercy. Mercy in the sense that it is on, it is on, it's, it's not, it's unwarranted mercy. It's mercy that we could never have paid for. Amen. I want to, I want to read something to you. Go to the book of Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9 from verse, from verse, let me read from, um, let me just read 23, later we'll examine the others. Let me, okay, let me read from verse 16. So then it is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of God that does what? Of God that shows mercy. Amen. The Bible says it's not of him that will it. He did not say we should not will. Amen. The Bible did not say we should not run, but it said it is God that shows mercy. Hallelujah. And, you know, we must come to that place because a lot of, we are faith people, right? I believe, I confess, I believe. How many of you have really believed, confessed, believed, but you have not seen it? Some things, amen. I know there are many things you have believed and confessed, you have believed, but you have not seen it yet. Amen. It's not because... Uh, believing and confessing is not enough. There is a part of God's mercy. Look at, because our life is very complex. Let me explain to you how complex things are. You know, remember the story of, um, the story of um, Esther. Now, do you know who Esther was before she was found by the king? She was nobody. She was a teen girl that just listened to her uncle, Mordecai. Amen. Oh, there was a pageantry. Guess what? The, the, the wife of the king, Vashti, had messed up. Can you orchestrate Vashti, Vashti to mess up? We can't orchestrate it. We can't determine that, oh, Vashti, you are going to mess up. Amen. Esther was not the only um, pageant that came. You know, pageant, they will come and display before the king. And it, they, they, it was so, they will purify you for weeks. Before you are able to step to see the king. That's to tell you the level of intricacy the king checks. They check for your skin. You know, they check that your skin is like honey. If you study, you know, the, 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 biblical, the biblical history. They check that your skin, your skin must look like honey. You must, there's a, there's a sense that must, you, because you can't even go near the king. Remember when Esther had to go and see the king. And said, if I perish, I perish. You can't go and, you can't near the king. You have to be far. And from that distance you are, you are standing, you have to have a certain scent, an aroma that is coming from you that will not irritate the king. Amen. You can never orchestrate Esther meeting the king. Hallelujah. No matter, in fact, let me tell you the truth. I don't believe that Esther was praying. Hallelujah. I don't believe Esther was doing any form of faith. I'm not sure she was confessing one day. I'm going to see the king. One day I'm going to, I'm not sure she was doing that. Amen. That means there's a part of our life. In fact, 80% of our life's experience is going to depend on the mercy of God. Amen. Amen. And it's something that we must appreciate. It's something that we must see. It's something that we must take it on. You know, Anna said in the book of First Samuel, it said, by strength shall no man prevail. She said, do not talk exceedingly proudly. Let not proud, pride come out from your lips. Why? Because she said that God... Is the one that is able to lift the beggar out of the dunghill and set those that are under above. God will remove one. And sometimes we, we are uncomfortable with that statement that ah, God will remove one. Didn't you hear what God did to the, the kings or the Canaanites? He said, Why? For his heritage, Israel. Amen. Many things that God will do for us. Do you know that to put God for God to put you in a certain position, He will remove some people. You know, there's a doctrine that God doesn't... 
It will remove some people to put you there. If it doesn't remove them, it won't be able to put you there. Amen. Amen. Tell me, Israel, are they a very good people? They are not a very good people. They are, in fact, he said they are a stiff neck and gainsaying people. Amen. Amen. But the Bible says that he removed the Canaanites. For their, he removed them. He removed them from that place he called the, the land flowing with milk and honey. He removed them. Why? For his heritage, Israel. Why again? Because his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Amen. We might not be praying that ah, God remove somebody from anybody sitting on my, on my star. Anybody sitting on my seat. No. It's not, our, it's not our place. Because you don't even know. Amen. You don't know. There are many, and this is where the Spirit of God helps us when we pray in tongues. There are many mysteries of our lives that you can never determine. You could never determine it. Amen. It is only God in his infinite mercy that will bring it to pass. You can never determine. How do you determine this? Now, look at this. The story of David. You know, David is a, is a, is a, is a, is a perfect example of God's mercy. In fact... There is something called the sure mercies of David. Amen. In the book of Isaiah chapter 55, the Bible speaks about the sure mercies of David. And he calls it sure because this, this mercy does not fail. David said, I hope in your mercy, O God. And I wish many of us would just say, I hope in your mercy. I hope in your mercy. You look at everything. You don't even know what the, 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 the path ahead of you is bleak. But you look at it and say, you don't look and say, you know, and confess. No, no. The simplest and the easiest prayer of petition you can pray is, God, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Amen. Because that, that prayer does not demand any faith on your part. Amen. It does not demand faith on your part. It's, it's completely resting on God's goodness to supply your need. Completely resting on God's goodness to be good. No, God's goodness, because the Bible says what? We are vessels of mercy. The book of Romans, chapter, 20, chapter 9, verse 23. He said that God may show his goodness on the vessels of mercy, even us. Amen. Amen. We are referred to as the vessels of mercy. In Osea, he said, I have called a people who are not my people, my people, and them beloved who are not beloved. And to Israel, I have for, for long stretched out my hand to a, a stiff neck. And gain same people. We are referred to as beloved. A vessel of mercy. Say I'm a vessel of mercy. So, we can never... Look at David. David's story. David was anointed by Samuel to be king of Israel. Amen. Amen. But he was where? In the wilderness. Now, the, the, Jesse had seven sons, right? David was the last of those seven sons. Some of them were in the military. Amen. I think about four of them, they're about. Now, he had six, fifths, right? He could have sent anybody to the war front to deliver victuals to his brothers, right? Why did he choose David? First of all, you must realize that David is not even in the house. Do you understand? David really essentially is usually in the wilderness. Amen. You must understand how the mercy of God, why, why, are we, why is it important that we are armed with this? Your pastor told us about the willingness of God. The mercy of God is God's willingness. Why should we be harmed with this? Because we must never be afraid at any point in our lives. You might not have anything. You might not have a job. You might not have anything. You might not have people. Let me tell you the story before I go into David's story. This man by the sea of Bethsaida, by that river, that river that they say will turn, and people who had infirmities will jump in. This man said to Jesus, Jesus came and said, oh, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus said, how long have you been here? He said, I've been here for 38 years. Amen. He said, I, 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 there's a stirring of the water that happens. But whenever the water is stirred, before I go in, somebody else has jumped in before me. And Jesus said, oh, that's interesting. Amen. Do you know that that man got up and took his bed and walked out? Was it by any faith of his? No. It was the mercy of God. Hallelujah. Was he the only one there? No. Amen. Look at David. David went and delivered this. Now, David went to his brothers at the exact time when that Philistine was crying out and saying, is there anybody? I'm defiling 
I'm defying the gods of Israel. Is there anybody that is able to fight me? Why is it at that time, exact time, that he will hear? Because if David didn't kill Goliath, he would never have been king. Do you know that? He needed a big kill. Because even his kingship had many troubles. Imagine he didn't have that kind of mighty victory. Remember when he king killed Goliath, they said Saul had slayed his thousand. David had slayed his what? Ten thousand. Did he kill ten thousand people? No. How was it now being rumored that he has slain ten thousand? You know, of course, it was a figure of speech to me. The fact that David has killed a Goliath outweighs what all the battles of Saul. What do you call that? Is the mercy of God. Remember how the rumor was going. I know most time, if you study, if you study history, how does rumor start? Ah, this thing happened. One person will just overblow it. Amen. Somebody will just go, ah, he slain a ta- ten thousand. Amen. And it became a news in every mouth of every in the mouth of everyone in Israel that David has slain his ten thousand. Amen. And by the mercy of God, he was anointed king, yet he was still in the wilderness. Amen. You can never orchestrate all the victories of your life. You can never plan it. You can never say, ah, me, I just, I had everything figured out. I networked enough. Now, we'll do all that. Remember, the Bible says that it's not of him that will it. He didn't say don't will. He said it's not of him that run it. He didn't say don't run, right? But it is of God that does what? Shows mercy. Have you not seen people that do everything and fail still? Amen. Because it's not, a, it's not about, ne- see, people say your network determines your net worth. Nice statement to say, but it's not always true. <laughs> you can have a network of people and still be wretched. Amen. But we have the Holy One of Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. We have the God of all comfort, the Father of mercy. Guess what? If you have this network, <laughs> it will determine your net worth. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we, we see in scripture that it is if, for everybody that God has brought to the limelight. Look at Joseph. Joseph was in prison. I'm, I'm hurrying up because I want, to, I, I, I want to get the point to us very fast. Joseph was in prison. And if you see the progression of scripture, you will see that Joseph was interpreting dreams for people. But somehow by the mercy of God, he interpreted the dream. For someone that was important. Remember, it took about two years after that man had left prison to remember that, oh, there was somebody that interpreted. Will, it, will you naturally, won't you remember somebody that gave you the interpretation that brought you out of prison? Naturally. But let's assume he remembered Joseph immediately he left prison. Guess what? Maybe he would have, Joseph would have received some form of, um, some form of pardon. We made a certain, we'll be given a certain position, and that's the end of it. Amen. But you see how the how the progression of God's mercy, and that's why many times we must be patient with ourselves. As long as we are doing everything we ought to do, we are working in faith, we're working in obedience, we're working in love. Be patient. Amen. The Bible in the book of James, chapter 5, it says, We have heard of what the patience of Job. How that God, God, let's go, let's go to the book of James. Just pray in tongues under your breath. God is about to deliver to you something huge. A revelation of God's mercy. Behold, we count them happy, which endure, verse 11. You have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen that the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful, and of what? Tender mercy. The Bible says the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. That is the end of the Lord. The end of the Lord is what? Where does the Lord eventually take us to? In our faith, in our journey of faith. The end is mercy. Amen. Supernatural supply is a, is, is a product of mercy. The mercy of God. You cannot explain everything. You must set yourself ready. You must ready yourself. Arm yourself with it. Fill your day, your life, your everything with it. Look at it. I've studied the history of many men that God has raised. And all I can see is progression of God's mercy flowing through. Because you wonder how did somebody come from a place, from a state of being unknown to suddenly becoming a figure that the whole world knows. An example of such person is Pastor Adeboe. Amen. 
very popular story. You know who he was before he became such a man. Many of us don't know how great this man is. But he's, he, he has the biggest church in the whole wide world today. The biggest church. Amen. Let me tell you how it happened. He, he, he went to see Young Cho. You know, of course, we know, we, all of us know the story of um, when he went to Tulsa to meet, but the story of Young Cho is not so popular. He went to meet Young Cho. And he, he said, how come you were able to build, you know, Young Cho had then had the biggest church in all of China. Amen. I said, how come this, how come you're able to do this? Now, he went there, and after he returned back to Nigeria, God gave him a certain wisdom. After visiting such a place, after visiting such a place, immediately, you know, he now, he now went back, of course, to, to where they are now, Redeem Camp, and continued his own vision. Continued his own vision. And somehow, we saw an explosion of the Redeem Christian Church of God. Do you think really it's just a product of a man's faith? It's the mercy of God. Because the idea of Young Cho was cells. Right? Cell church. Young Cho was the one that popularized cell church, right? Having cells, having cells, having cells, having cells. Did you see Redeem come and be doing cell? It is the mercy of God. Amen. It's not by replicating somebody's by replicating somebody's pattern. It's by depending solely on God's mercy. And somehow God's mercy will show in different ways. It can come in wisdom. It can come in connections. Amen. But we need the mercy of God. Say, I abide in God's mercy. I abide in God's mercy. So there's too much to our lives. Our life has too many intricacies. You don't know where you'll be in the next two years. Amen. You don't, you, you might say, I know I have it well planned out, but you don't really know. You don't know the kind of connections God is going to bring by his mercy. You don't know where God is going to place you by his mercy. Many of us don't even know we'll be here right now. <laughs> but somehow we find ourselves here by the mercy of God. Amen. Now, God's mercy is God's... Now, I want, I want to read something. There's a scripture I, 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 I thought I wrote down. I didn't, I didn't write it down. But God's mercy for us is, is, not, is, not, is not like... <laughs> most times we look at God's mercy as... When, especially when you talk to, about, to people about God's mercy. They look at it as about sin. It's about sin. No. And sometimes some people, some people are armed with so much knowledge or supposed knowledge. You tell them, you know, depend on God's mercy. And they'll be like... Well, they can't, some people can't even say, God, have mercy on me again. Because you feel I've already received God's mercy. Amen. No, but there is a place for God's mercy every day. Jeremiah the prophet said, your steadfast love. He said, he said your, your steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. I use this song to remember the scripture. <laughs> he said, his faithfulness never comes to an end. Amen. That means they are new every morning. Every day when we wake up, there is a new mercy of God to enjoy. Amen. The Bible says it gives us richly all things that we may enjoy. Amen. He makes everything new every morning. There is a new mercy of God for us to enjoy. There is something new in the mercy of God for us to enjoy. Because if you look at your life, if you look at the projection of many men in scripture, how does Daniel position himself? How does he position himself to, be, to stand out? How, does, how, do, how, do, how do those four Jews position themselves to stand out? They are not forcing it. Like, let's just force ourselves. No. Now, look at it. The king, you know, in Joseph's time, the king told Joseph the story. Ah, ah okay, this was a dream I had. That's why you can never force it. It has to be God's mercy. He said, this was a dream I had. Somehow, the magicians of Pharaoh's time could not give the interpretation. They could have come up with lies, you know, that would make sense. But the mercy of God did not allow those lies to make sense. Amen. In the time of Daniel, the king said, oh, no, no, no. I'm not going to tell you what I had in. Let your, the, the thing you really believe that makes you a magician, let it reveal to you the, the dream and give you the interpretation so that you will not concoct lies to me. Do you see the same, almost the same situation, but different requirements. Amen. So that means you cannot say, you cannot, you can, you know, Daniel might have read the story of Joseph and said, you know what, I've read in, our fathers, the king, our fathers in, in, in the time of Joseph, 
they revealed the story. Just tell me the story. I will give you the interpretation. The king said, no. Amen. And then Daniel said, you know what? I'm going to seek God. He said, why, why, why is the king's order so hasty? Can the king grant us some days? I'm going to seek God. Amen. And Daniel went on and it's, the Bible says he sought the Lord. And the Lord gave him the revelation. Do you know, let me tell you the meaning of do you know, have you ever, do you know what it means for you to go and meet God and say, God, the dream that somebody else had, it's not your dream, oh. Amen. The dream that somebody else had, can you please give me the dream and then give me the interpretation? <laughs> Amen. You see that that was a, it was the mercy of God. Amen. Because where have you heard that? Have you heard that again? You, 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 it's the mercy of God. If you have a peculiar things like that, it's the mercy of God. Amen. And God gave Daniel the dream and gave Daniel the interpretation. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a very dangerous thing to live a life without the mercy of God in view. Amen. You must hope in God's mercy. Say, I hope in God's mercy. Every day of my life. I hope in God's mercy. I hope in God's mercy. You can plan all the planning. If Solomon said that. He said, he said that the, the, the race is not for the swift. It's not for the swift. It's a time and chance. Of course, that time and chance is the mercy of God. Time and chance. God is the author of time. God is the author of chances. He is the one that orchestrates all that. And that's why you must never think that the world... Now, the systems of the earth, the Bible says that the, the systems of this world, is the, there's a God of this world, the systems of the world. But the earth and its fullness is the Lord. Amen. He is the one in control of everything. Remember when we read the book of Psalms 136? The Bible says he made the great light. He made the sun. He is God that is in control of everything. That's why Joshua could stand and say, let the sun stand still. Now, we know the sun Solar system, we know, we understand solar system has evolved over time. We know the sun is actually standing still. So actually it was the earth that stood still. Do you understand? But God is the, is the author of all creation. So even if Joshua would make a mistake in his faith pronunciation, God will still take control. And his mercy will still shine forth. Amen. So our God is the author of everything. You might be looking at yourself from a distance and you'll be wondering, how will God take me from this point to the other point? Guess what? He is the author of all things. He is the creator of the universe. But the most time we underestimate that God actually made the universe. Tell me, if you are dealing with someone that made the entire universe, what is impossible? Is there anything impossible? No. Amen. But you must open that mercy. You must... You must have that attitude. Look at the deliverances that David enjoyed. It is nothing short of the mercy of God. All his life he was running. As a king, even as a king, his children, they were still chasing to kill him. Amen. All his life. And that's why he said, me, I hope in the mercy of God. My hope is in God's mercy. My times, my days are in your hands. Amen. We must have that attitude towards life. Sometimes, some people look at you and say, what are you going to do? And that's why I'm, I'm very, um, when I look at some people who, all, see, you must never live fake life or fake faith or do as if you know, you know, you know, you know. So some people, they do as if they know, they know, they know. Pride. You have been doing something that has not worked. This is not time for you to ask, cry for the mercy of God. Amen. You have been trying, it has been failing. You have tried all you know. You have done all you, you have done all the faith confession. You have spoken. I remember there was a time in my work, in my faith, in my life, that I had to say, God, have mercy on me. Oh. <laughs> I don't even know what is happening now. Amen. You must be able to pray that prayer. Most times when I wake up now in the morning, I just say, Lord, have mercy. It is a prayer that does not require faith on your part. Amen. It doesn't require faith on your part. He doesn't require anything. You don't have to be a giant of faith. Was Esther a giant of faith? No. She, wasn't a, she didn't even know what to do when the time of trouble came, when Israel was going to perish. Mordecai was just saying, see, it seems God has placed you here for such a time as this. You understand? 
That means she, she wasn't so, she just said, oh, let's just go on a three days fast. Let's even first know what we are doing here. Amen. She was not a giant of faith. And let me tell you, the greatest miracles happen not by our faith, but by the mercy of God. Lazarus was dead in the tomb. Was Lazarus, you know, sometimes, faith, you know, if you are a faith person, you sometimes require faith on the part of the person. That have faith, you know. <laughs> You'll be taught, have faith. How do you teach a dead person to have faith? <laughs> Lazarus was dead. There was no, raising the dead in as much as it, it's a faith. By faith, it's the mercy of God. <laughs> Amen. See, I've prayed for the dead before. Eh? I can tell you, it's not a very beautiful situation to be in that place. <laughs> Everybody is looking at you. Loved ones are expecting, and so they are not even expecting. Let me tell you the truth. They are not expecting anything. They are expecting you to be sh to shamelessly leave that place. <laughs> Amen. Because they are just looking at you. You understand? It's the mess. I think as much as we demonstrate, we do all the scripture I've seen. You know, chase people out, pray, and believe God, but it's the mercy of God. Amen. Ask many preachers, they will tell you. That's why you see sometimes, you see, as though some, some, sometimes it doesn't seem to happen. Amen. Hallelujah. Honestly, if you meet real people that, real, that do real faith stuff, they will tell you, it is the mercy of God. Hallelujah. Miracles, signs, wonders is the mercy of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And you must, we must hope on it. Our hearts must yearn for it. Let's read the book of Romans. I want us to get the full context of that scripture. Romans chapter 9. The Bible says, from verse 7. Let me read from verse 8. Let me read from 9. For this is the word of promise. At this time I will come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by her father Isaac, for the children not being yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth, it was said unto her, the elders shall serve the younger. As it's written, Jacob, have I loved, Esau, have I hated. Now, we know if you, if you uh, 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 the, the Bible hermeneutics will teach you, that when God said, Jacob have I loved, Israel have I hated, it's not talking about God outrightly hating anybody, but talking about preference. I prefer Jacob to Esau. You understand? So you're not saying that ah, God, God hates, God does not hate anybody. It's talking about preference. What shall we say then, verse 14? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he, he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it's not of him that will it. Nor of him that run it, but of God that showed mercy. For the scripture had said unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose, have I raised thee that I might show my power in thee, that, by, that, that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore, have he mercy on whom he have mercy, and on whom he will he had not. That will say then unto him, unto me, why doth he yet find fault? For who as says we know, but O man, who art thou that replies against God? Shall the things formed to say to him, that formed it, why hast thou made me thus? And this is, the, this is the explanation to people. Don't try to explain to people. Just try to struggle. That why is this? Why is that? You are a clay in the hands of the potter. I don't, does this scripture need explanation more than this? You are a clay in the hands of the potter. You don't tell, do you tell the potter, make me like this? No. The potter determines what he makes you. And let me tell you, you know, Pastor Fumi explained this to me a time, some time ago. Whatever God does is called right judgment. Sometimes, some people might have to go in that way. They might have to pass away. But that is right judgment. In the time of the early church, there was a king, the error that rose up. And the Bible says he spoke proudly. And an angel struck him. You might say, God, don't explain it. That is right judgment. Amen. Don't try to say, God, don't help God. It's right judgment. Amen. Amen. How would you explain the Canaanite living Israel? Do you think it, it was by a strong and mighty hand? Look at what he said about Pharaoh. He said, look, I did this that I might make my name known. Do you know that throughout all the life of Israel, they always reference the story of Pharaoh. 
Do you know? When they wanted to fight certain enemies, they would say, remember what happened to, to those in Egypt, to Pharaoh. Why? God was making a statement that would last through history. And God is going to make a statement in your life. They will say, remember, remember, Bra Wale, remember, remember Sister Thomason, remember Bra Ayo, remember Sister Aisha, remember, remember how God was so merciful. Amen. Sometimes the mercy of God might be judgment to some people. Don't look at it. Don't, don't try to explain it. It's good. That's still God's goodness. Amen. Let me tell you, let me tell you, you know, you see, we, we talk about Sodom and Gomorrah, we're like, we try to explain, see, see, God in mercy is trying to explain to us what will happen, what will be the end for those who reject the gospel. Do you know that those who reject the gospel will go to hellfire, actually? Do you believe that? How many of you don't believe it? Ah, God is love now. What do you think? They will go to hell, that's judgment. If you, the gospel is preached to you, about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, and you don't believe it, you are going to go to hell. There is no explanation for that. Amen. So, you see, what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah is a type and a shadow of what will happen to those who reject the gospel of Jesus. And again, God was trying to preserve posterity. Imagine the corruption that happened in Sodom and Gomorrah spread beyond how God has tried to stop it. Do you think we'll be talking about homosexuality the way we are talking about it today? It would have covered the earth. So God is the judge of all. Say God is the judge of all the earth. And God is righteous. His judgments are right. Amen. So you see in the book of Romans. Let's, let's go back there. Romans 9. For therefore he had mercy, verse 18, on whom he had mercy on, and whom he will he had. That would say then. Okay, let me go to 21. Had not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make a vessel of, unto honor and another unto dishonor? What if God willing to show his wrath? And to make his power known, endure with much long suffering the verses of wrath, feed to destruction, that he might make known the riches of his glory and the vessels of mercy. Amen. Say, I'm the verse of mercy. Which he had afore prepared unto glory, even us. Say, me, I'm the verse of mercy. You are the verse of mercy. And he, you know, he referred to some people and, and called them what? The vessel of wrath. Amen. You can't explain it. This is the goodness of God. Hallelujah. And we receive it. He said, we are the vessel of mercy. He said, which he had prepared, he had prepared unto glory. So there's a glory ahead of us. There's a glory before us. Amen. So what are we supposed, what is the expectation of us? The Bible in the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, from verse 15, 16. The Bible says, come boldly. Amen. So no matter the situation you are facing in your life, no matter where you are in life, no matter what is going on, the solution sometimes is for you to pray, pray, make declaration and fast and do everything you can do. But let me tell you, the, 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 the real, one of the easiest ways to get out of many things is to hope on God's mercy. Just wake up and say, God, I hope on your mercy. Sometimes it might be with tears. Amen. Sometimes it might be with crying. You are not begging God. You are looking to his mercy. Amen. It's not begging. You know, sometimes it looks like it's beggarly to ask for mercy. No, it's not beggarly. And it's not about sin because we know that God has already forgiven us. Amen. It's about, Lord, I need your help here. I don't know what else to do here. I don't know where this is going to come from. Why? Because we are entering stages in our lives where we have, you know, many of us have left certain, we are now going to stages where we are going to be independent. Amen. You need God's mercy. You need to know how to access it. Sometimes we just talk about it and we know, no. You need to know how to access it. How do you access it? By opening your mouth. That man by the pool of Bethel, he just says, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. That man, we don't even, I don't know whether he's from the stock of Israel. Amen. Have mercy on me. Look at that woman, the woman that Jesus said to her, look, I will first give that which belongs to the children. The children must be fed first before you. She, she pushed for it. She pushed for it. You will stay there and you will say, Lord, I believe in your mercy. Lord, have mercy on me. Let your mercy overshadow the situation I see. Lord, help me. I hope in your mercy. That's why you fill yourself with the book of Psalms. Amen. 
You fill yourself with the book of Psalms and say, Lord, I don't have any hope. I don't have any hope again. I don't know anyone. I don't have any help. Guess what the man said? He said, I have no man. How many of us? You know, really, you don't have any man. <laughs> I don't mean uh, you don't have any man. You know the way man is today. You don't have any help. Some of us have help. That's why we uh, just, uh, amen. But some of us, we don't have any man. You know where you are coming from. You know the family. You know your, your you know, you, you've seen the track. You've seen how people that have gone ahead of you, how they lived. You know that if you go in that path, you, you will enter into the same situation. Amen. Maybe it's time for you to say, Lord, I have no man. I have nobody. I have no man. There's no one to help me. I need your mercy. Amen. Hallelujah. I always reference my university days. Maybe that's why the Lord allowed that. Because somehow it has taught me so much on faith. I didn't have anybody. I was in so much academic mess. Amen. No help. Nobody. I can't. There was a time I, that was the first time I tried to actually approach a lecturer like that. I just tell you that, see, you, nobody can really help you. Nobody can help you. The Bible says we should not put our trust in men whose breath is in their nostrils. Imagine, within a second of time, someone's breath can leave his nostrils. Amen. How can you trust such a man? I knew I had nobody. No help. Look at all the academic... Sometimes when you explain some kind of things to people, they look at you as if you are like the worst person and you are a Christian and you have all these problems. <laughs> Amen. I remember when I was trying to first get into school, I was speaking to Brother Wally, talking about it today, just remembering. My life started with trouble because I had registered for Pursuit TME. I had registered and had, I was ready. Somehow, the person that did it, I, I wasn't just cautious enough. I didn't check. And the person that did it didn't put my passport, didn't upload it very well. <laughs> Amen. So it was not clear. So I know there was a problem of impersonation a lot at that time. People usually impersonate people to write exams. So as I got to Uniben, I, I sat, I was going to enter the hall. <laughs> I can't forget that. I don't even remember the man's face, but I can't forget what he said to me. I was going to enter the hall. The man said, hey, Imam Fidon, yeah, wait, wait. Others entered. He said, your passport is not clear. I said, eh, it's not clear. He said, you can't write this. I said, but it's me that is there. He said, eh, I know it's you. But me, I don't, you know it's you. But me, I don't know it's you. <laughs> and he said, you've never went to school. You've already have, started having problems. I started to cry. I beg. <laughs> Amen. You put the non Do you know what it means for your expectation to be cut short? That you've been expecting something. You are there. You have prepared. And they tell you no. <laughs> I cried. I begged. I went to all the... I was begging that, please... I, it, this, I was the one on this image. I was the one here. <laughs> and the man said, no. You are not the one. Everybody was like, ew, 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 ew. But nobody could help. <laughs> Amen. I cried so much. The next thing I did, I went to go and overfeed myself. I went to spend all my money to eat rice. <laughs> Amen. But I was, I was God. What is this? And from then on, I went to write the exam in our chief polytechnic and got into our chief, but I was not happy. I was so angry because I really didn't want to go to a polytechnic. I wanted to go to university. Amen. But I was just there. And you know what I began to do? I didn't take it ordinary. I didn't look at it as an ordinary event. I had a friend then who had also written jam for about four times. Some of us, you have had life easy. If you meet some people who have faced some kind of battles, <laughs> there's a way they hope on God's mercy. Amen. I remember Maxwell then, he has traveled out of the country now. But then, two of us will go to Omega Fire Ministries and we will pray. Because I believe somehow that this thing is not ordinary. How come his passport that made me not write exam? Amen. I said, no, this thing is, 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 is the devil. My friends who believe his own is the devil because he has not been passing jam. This is someone that used to teach. He used to teach. He used to teach. You know, um, in Benin, one of the most progressing um, institutions is Tutoria. Or more. People have made millions from tutorial. So he used, he used to be a tutorial teacher. I mean, he used to teach students that would go and pass jump. He would not go and fail it. <laughs> Amen. 
So he was, he, it, it bothered him. And years and years and years he had been trying. He couldn't just pass. And we went. We will go to the church. It's not this one. <laughs> we will just be praying, God. We will be crying, no. Me, I've not, I, I, just, just one year I didn't write. Not because I failed, but because I couldn't write the position. Amen. But we'll be crying, Lord. Lord, help us. God, help us. Help us. Help us. Until we tear your shirt. <laughs> Amen. And seriously, this was how he was praying. We were praying that, Lord, your mercy. And see, it's good that even in the, because at that time, all that mattered to us. That was the biggest thing to us. Go to school is the biggest thing, right, at that point. Amen. So when you reach where everything, this is all that matters to you, go to God in humility and seek his mercy. You know, this, this, this career is what you, you know, choosing a career is a risk. What if you not succeed? <laughs> Amen. Do you know that it is a risk? Everything is practically a risk we are taking. I'm talking to you from my heart, the way it is coming. Amen. You are going to be risking your life throughout till you leave this earth. Amen. Marriage is a risk. Hope you know. Career is a risk. Friendship sometimes is a risk. <laughs> Amen. It's, a, it's faith and it's the mercy of God that just brings us with, in, in contact with things that will not destroy us. Amen. And mercy of God will just take us out of things that would, like, that would have destroyed us. And we sought God's mercy. I remember we would pray, pray, pray. We would pray so much and we would depend and say, Lord, just help. There was a time we, we so much, the, the, man, the man of God said, you know what, if you want God to do anything for you, come and touch this altar and touch your head and go back. And, oh boy, you are laughing now. We did it too. Me and him, we just went there. Go, went there. <laughs> Amen. They there. We, and let me tell you, to tell you how serious it is, we, all of us line up. Oh, because the church is very big. Amen. Whatever you think, we were shy looking for God's. We, not that God's mercy is far away. I'm not saying that. But we were hoping. We had no other. People had people in Uniben that they could call and say, do you know what? Let this person in. Let this person in. Amen. But we didn't have anybody. We didn't know anybody to call. Nobody was going to help us. Amen. That, it looks simple. But that's the way you should approach life in everything. I was just remembering it today and I was speaking to him that we just hoped on God's mercy that God have mercy on us. Amen. Let me tell you what happened. Me, I didn't even have enough faith as he had. Him, he had already seen everything. Me, I was a young boy now, a young man. Immediately, he now wrote Jamie, I had 250 then. And 250 was a big deal. Man, to have 250. He had 264. Immediately, he saw his jam score. We were seeing how cheap a technical student. He packed his bag and left, went to Benin. <laughs> he left the entire, the entire, the entire study. He did me, I still stand and say, ah, well, in case, well, in case, in case, in case. <laughs> last, last, I will fall back here. He left. That's the day that he, he felt nothing can stop me. Amen. He trusted so much that God was with him. Me, I was still, mm, mm, I was still, uh, I beg, let's package this one in case. At least I can still do direct entry after I finish ND. Amen. Do you understand? See, you must get to that point where you know that God is all you have. Hallelujah. You must reach, and let me, most of us are at that point in our lives. Don't look at people. Don't look at, ah, this person will help me. This, don't look for people to help you. Amen. Because it's not, see, let me tell you why. And God revealed this to me. This is God's revelation to me. He told me, look, and this was how I, I stopped the hatred of people. Sometimes you just have unnecessary hatred towards people that are rich. They didn't help me, they didn't help me, they didn't help me. They were not born to help you. Amen. God is your help. God told me, he said, it's not as if, he said, people are limited in many things. Look at, this is God's revelation to me. He said, sometimes people are limited in resource. Sometimes people are limited in mercy. Resource and mercy. Some people might have the resource, but they don't have the mercy. Do you understand? Some people might have the mercy. They don't have the resource. You can't afford to trust those kind of people. Your trust has to be on God. Guess what? He has both the resource and what? The mercy. Amen. Amen. You can trust in him. And I remember how God just helped us. We got into school and we were blazing. God, we were, we were so joyful. It was like a victory to us because we saw this one come to pass. Amen. And there are many things you will see come to pass in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. That was the same way when I was in at final year challenges again. I looked. I remember then I would be walking 
I will tell God, Lord, I believe, I trust in your mercy. Stay there. The Bible says, remember the patience of Job. Don't say, ah, this thing is not. No, stay there. Lord, I hope in your mercy. Lord, I believe in your mercy. I believe. I believe. I know things will change. Remember, the Bible says, it's not of him that will it. It doesn't mean don't will. It's very important because the mercy of God also must catch you up in your willingness. It doesn't mean don't run, but it's not of him that will it. It's not of him that run it. God will show mercy, but you'll be willing. You'll be running. Amen. But God will show mercy. Amen. Say, I receive the mercy of God. I receive the mercy of God in my career. I receive the mercy of God in my life. Let me tell you something. God is able to raise the beggar out of the donkey. You might look at, ah, what is my life done to look at? Nothing, nothing is happening. Don't, don't look, don't think that God cannot do anything about it. How do you orchestrate Anna being in, 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 in Shiloh at that time? She was there alone. In fact, Eli thought that she was drunk. Amen. I said, no, your handmaid is not drunk. I'm just, I'm just overburdened with sorrow. Imagine that someone that was going to speak the words that would change your life comes and first insults you. Many of us, Gen Z, uh, no, let me not say many of us, I beg. Gen Z's, <laughs> Gen Z's, they will say, ah, how would you just talk to me like that? Is it because he's a man of God? He said, the, the man judged that. He said, why are you drunk at this time? Ah, ah, it's too early. Are you not too early to be drunk? You self. He said, no, I'm overboarding. Have you seen someone that is drunk before? That means Anna must have been be behaving somehow in that prayer. Because she's looking. Remember, they were mocking her. Have you seen a woman that's been mocked for lack of child? Ah, I've seen it too. You don't want to see it. It's not a good place, though. Amen. I've seen a woman that's been mocked. Hallelujah. Life, it happened right before my eyes. The tears, the pain. She, she bottled everything up and she was there. And she was you know, in supplication to God. And the mercy of God was going to come in the form of Eli. By a prophetic word. And he said, you know what? By this time, you are going to, have, you are going to carry your child. How do you... See... The mercy of God, you cannot determine how it's going to come. That's why it's not good to look down on people. Don't look down on anybody. Don't have respect of persons. Say this one. That's why the Bible says when someone who is, you know, dressed in a gay clothing comes to church, don't say, come and sit in front. No. Let there be no respect of person in your heart. Don't say this one, I will respect this one. This one, I will not respect this one. No. You don't know who God is going to use. Amen. Because you are not the orchestrator of things. God is the one that orchestrates things. Hallelujah. So Eli said to her, you're going to carry a child. Eli must not have been a perfect priest. Of course, we, obviously we saw things that happened in his life. His children were wayward. You would have said, oh, this one that is children is wayward. <laughs> Can this one, this one, this one wants to speak to me. Me, yeah, I was sick. My, it's God I'm looking up to. Okay. But God was, the mercy of God was going to show itself in the instrumentality of a man. An imperfect man. Amen. So when words are spoken to you, it's the mercy of God. Amen. Hold those words. They are the mercy of God. So when words that I, I've seen pastor write to me, I'm like, ah, did, he, did he plan this poetry? But I'm, I like it because the words sound so, so nice and so big. <laughs> Amen. I'm like, was he planning? Was he, is he studying poetry to say this thing? <laughs> Hallelujah. But I know and I hope on those things. And I write them down and I look at them and I say, these things, they will come to pass. This is the mercy of God towards us. Prophetic speakings are the mercy of God towards, towards you. So when you see those words, look at it again and say, no, these things will come to pass. These things will come to pass. I know. I know the words that have been spoken over me. David was a king anointed, but still in the wilderness. Many of us, we have words hanging over our heads. You will keep believing it. David did not go and struggle for kingship and say, Saul, I'm going to defy I'm going to defy the kingship of Saul. I'm going to take over the throne. After all, they've, 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 they've anointed me king. No. He said, I hope in your mercy, dear Lord. I hope in your mercy. Don't go and fight. You know, sometimes you want to go and take. This is rightfully mine. No. You will hope in God's mercy. You say, Lord, when you, I, I depend on your plan. I, it's not of man to know his own, his own ways. It's not of man to know what is ahead. You are the God that knows tomorrow. I will depend on your plan. Amen. I'm telling you how you go and pray. How you will take prayer. 
Sometimes don't be too mechanical and just blah, 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 blah. No. Sometimes put your heart inside of it and say, Lord, I hope in your mercy. I don't know what to do. You know it's okay to go and tell God, God, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Will you help me? Will you help me? I remember then when I was going to pick a, 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 a. That's why, don't see, it's not everything that money will do. Do you have to pay for everything in your life? Imagine you have to pay for everything. Now, imagine you want to do a big project. And you are expecting the money. Sometimes it's not money that will come. Amen. Sometimes it's, can't someone just dash you? Can't someone just dash you? So, someone can dash you. Amen. Someone can just dash you. I've not bought a laptop since I started doing tech. Amen. Somehow the mercy of God. <laughs> just provided things. When I started, someone just, ah. I was just learning. I was borrowing. I was borrowing until that one now became my own. <laughs> the one I was borrowing now became my own. Somehow, God's plan, God's goodness. Amen. I was thinking to my, I was thinking to Bradley. Somehow you walk and, and somehow the mercy of God just he has lap, he has laptop, but somehow the mercy of God just brought a job that just came to give him a laptop. <laughs> that dash him. Amen. You must look at those things as the mercy of God and you must sometimes just take back and just worship. You know, sometimes you just be like, worship God and say, God, I thank you. Sing songs of praise to him and say, Lord, this thing is your doing. How would you, how would you have orchestrated everything that happened? You remember how everything happened? I went to see Jamie. This, 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 that. How? Sh should I have gone there that day? No. We, you can't orchestrate everything. How would this job come? You think it's by going to LinkedIn? I'm writing this is my portfolio. <laughs> How many do you want to do? <laughs> One time I saw, I was applying, I saw ah, ah, 5,000 application. <laughs> Bro, you can never live by your efforts. Do you know how many people are doing the same things you are doing? Hallelujah. It's the mercy of God that distinguishes what we are doing. Someone will just look at you and say, ah, ah. You, 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 your mind, you'll be saying, ah, this thing is not that good, though. But you say, no, this one is what I want. You say, are you even afraid that I go? There's no going to catch me. This thing, I don't, I don't really know it that, like that. But the person who says, it's you I want. Do you know those things can happen to you? They just say, who do, who do we want for the bread? They say, um, Ayo is not so good, but it's Ayo I want. I want him to handle it. I want him to handle, manage my real estate. I want him to manage the properties. I want him to manage these people. I want him to put him among the board of directors. And he doesn't have the training. We will train him. Don't you know it can happen? Yes, sir. Say, I don't know. There's something about you. I just feel like, I just feel like, do you like a car? <laughs> I just feel like I should give you some cars. Just take, take this car. <laughs> Amen. Say there's something about you. See, my children, all of them, they have left the country. This house, nobody is. You want this house? <laughs> they'll be begging, they'll be pursuing you with house. Take, please, just take this house now. Take. Amen. It's the mercy of God. Because how do you orchestrate? How you can't orchestrate everything. You must look at God's mercy and say, God, I hope in your mercy. God, I hope in your mercy. Let me tell you, all my life I bought phone once that I, I took money like this. Money I work for. Not, not money I work for. Money that my parents sent me. <laughs> the first time, ah, they sent me some money. And then I, I added some money. When I've only done it once. Amen. First time I was going to go to school. I went to, there was a man. He was a Jehovah's Witness then. I was very passionate. Me, you know, Jehovah's Witness will come to your house. Me, I will go to the, the man's house. <laughs> I was so passionate about knowledge. Now, don't go to any God, Jehovah's, I beg go. Now, so the man was ah, you are going to school. Ah, you don't have a phone. He gave me, that time there was this Android phone that had both buttons and screen to click. He shall give me, and that phone was very, at that time, was very good phone. I shall use that phone. I, somehow, every time through my life, somebody always just gives me. The one I, I'm currently using, someone just bought it. I didn't ask for it. Amen. Maybe, maybe someone will actually buy the next one. I don't know. Because <laughs> I've saying I'm going to get the next one. Amen. But somehow, my life is a product of God's mercy. You might say, ah, oh, it's just food. Eh? 
That's how someone will come and give me a car. You'll be looking at eyes, just this, just this. That's how someone will come and give me a house. That's how someone will just say, you know what, manage this real estate. I don't think that is impossible. I know what God is able to do. Amen. And I'm open. See, you must be open. Sometimes, you know what we call sanctified imaginations. Sometimes you might not have a vision of, I, saw, I just saw seven angels. I saw seven crowns. I saw a light. I saw a light. I saw a scroll coming down from, you might not have that kind of vision. But you can just sit down and just begin to look. Ah, I saw someone give me a car. The, and you just look at your life. Ah. <laughs> Say, ah, I saw myself speaking to 10,000 people. Meanwhile, you have only um, um, like 50 followings on YouTube. Amen. <laughs> I saw myself reaching the nations. But you are speaking to only two people as disciples. Amen. You know, as a church, we have a vision of 10,000. 10, see, those, see, let me tell you, evangelism one by one on one will not bring those people. You know what will bring it? The mercy of God. Amen. You just say, how many one on one can you release? How, say, be honest. Let's be honest. How many one on one did Redeem do? Redeem, of course, they had a program, let's go efficient. But it's still the mercy of God. What has happened, to, what has happened in Redeem is the mercy of God. And never criticize. Never. Because you want that result as well. <laughs> you want God's mercy. I'm trusting for what has happened to Redeem to happen to us in tier 11. <laughs> I'm believing for God's mercy. That one day we'll say, ah, five minutes walk, you'll find a TLM church. you find you find a center where, where, where TLM, where we have a pastor from TLM. Amen. Amen. Don't you think that's possible? Yes. Redeem started the same way we started. In fact, we started maybe quite better. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I just want you to see possibilities in God's mercy and hope in it. Remove your eyes from people. This one did not help me. Stop, stop the nonsense. Nobody is going to help you. It is God's help that will push people to help you. Nobody will just wake up and just say, ah, I don't feel like helping you. I don't feel like, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't. <laughs> Amen. It's the mercy of God. Amen. Say, I hope in God's mercy. I hope in God's mercy. Pray in tongues for some time. I hope in your mercy, dear Lord. I hope in your mercy. I hope in your mercy. I hope in your mercy. My hope is in your mercy. Amen. You know, in the Nigerian Constitution, I went on to read. I actually checked in, in 2022. Buhari gave clemency to about 159 people. Do you know that in the Nigerian Constitution, there is a provision for the president, sitting president, to provide clemency. That means, that means to have... It, 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 no, clemency is where you show mercy to people. You can decide that even though these people have committed this crime, I'm going to actually give them a release. There's a provision in our constitution. I even wrote it down. There's a provision in our constitution for clemency. The president can decide that even though, no matter, now it can be on basis of certain law. Now, some people that were granted clemency in 2022, based of they were old, sick, but it, there were 159. All 159 people were not old and sick. So the president can determine that, you know what, I'm going to give state, there's what we call state pardon. And there's federal pardon, right? Now, you, you did that. State pardon, federal pardon. Now, the state, the governor of Lagos State can grant a certain pardon to people who committed state crimes, right? Now, the president can grant pardon to people who committed federal crimes. You understand? Imagine that man in its weak wisdom could determine that it could be necessary that the president should be able to grant clemency based on mercy. Now, think about the mercy of God. This is man, the Bible calls the wisdom of man foolishness. Do you understand? The Bible calls the wisdom of man it said sensual and devilish, the wisdom of this world. The Bible says the wisdom that descended from above is first peaceable, easily entreated. That means whatever you call clemency in the human knowledge and understanding, before God, it is big. It is bigger than the clemency you see on earth. That's why even today, what we enjoy... The mercy, you know, see, let me tell you. Pastor Chris gave an example. He said the reason why God gave people wisdom to build their airplane is so that men of God could travel. Children of God could easily travel. So you as a child of God, you want to go to America, you won't have to go through the sea. That's the reason why God has blessed 
what, that's the reason why the mercy of God came upon men, so that they can have certain wisdom to be able to bring out certain technologies that will make life easier for who? Everybody in the world. First, his children. Amen. So why do we have inventions to make life easier? So that we, his children, we can enjoy it. Amen. That's how wide reaching the mercy of God is. Now, you in particular, God will show you mercy in ways you never thought and expected. I'm praying for you people are looking at me. Amen. I say amen. Ah, I've come like a prophet to you today. I've come in the capacity of a prophet. And I'm telling you the truth. It never fails. That's why it's called what? The sure mercies of David. The Bible says, remember the patience of Job. That and remember the end of the Lord, that the Lord is what? Pitiful and full of what? Tender mercy. Stand to your feet. You are going to cry out to the Lord. You might be saying, ah, this situation. I don't know what to do, dear Lord. I don't know. I don't have a grasp. I don't have the understanding. You don't have to have the understanding. You don't require faith when it comes to the mercy of God. You just require for you to say, Lord, have mercy. Help me. Let God, just go ahead and pray that prayer. The book of Isaiah, the prophet said, the Lord God will help me, and I will not be confounded. The Lord God will help me. I will not be confounded. The Lord God will help me. I will not be afraid. I will not be ashamed. I will not be confounded. You might be in, in a difficult situation, in a difficult mist. You are looking at this, the, the path ahead of you is misty. It's full of smoke. He said, dear Lord, I don't know what to do. It is only you that can help. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Have mercy upon me, son of David. Help me in the name of Jesus. Lord, I hope in your mercy. I trust in your mercy. It might be, it might be, you look at your family, you say, nobody has really broken through this radius. Nobody has broken through this radius. Nobody has broken in through wealth. Nobody has broken into success. Maybe there's, there's something that looks like a pattern. And you are looking at it, and it looks as though it's coming close. Oh, the mercy of God. Oh, dear Lord, I'm looking to your mercy. I'm looking to your mercy. I have no man. I have no man. Be like that man by, by the sea, by that, by that pool in Bethsaida. Say, I have no man. Dear Lord, I have no man. I have no man. I have no one to help. I look to you for help. I look to you for help. I look to you for help. Lord, I look to you. 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 Kala Radi Gazila Bandes. I look to you for help. Oh, thank you, dear Lord Jesus. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus. I look to you, dear Lord. 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 You might be in a difficult situation. Maybe it's for somebody else. The mercy of God is sure. The mercy of God is sure. The mercy of God is sure. Pray from your heart. Say, dear Lord, I look to you. I look to you, dear Lord. I look to you, dear Lord. Lord, help me. The Lord God would help me and I will not be ashamed. In this matter of supply... I have no man. In this matter of wealth, I have no man. In this matter of provision, I have no man. You are my only help. You are my only source. And I said, God is the rock. There is no rock like our God. There is no rock like our God. He said, a barren woman is not a mother of many children. Thank you, dear Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Was that helpful? Was that helpful? May I have your seat. God bless you. Um, um, you might want to give your offerings. If you came with your offerings. Um, hallelujah. Remember, we are still fasting. I believe this is the... We started on the 11th, so this should be the what... 21, right? Okay, day 21. Right, so we still have about nine more days to go. We're still fasting. Um, remember, we are having prayers today by 10 p.m. and tomorrow by 5 a.m. 
and on Friday we are going to have in the information will go ahead. I know we'll get to know what we are actually going to what, what, what we're going to have on Friday. It could be a video, amen. But the information will come to us. God bless you and have a um, glorious day ahead. Uh, um, glorious night, right? Um, we have evangelism on Friday. This Friday we are going to be going to two schools outreach. So we're going to go to Molax. We're going to go to um, Ezekiel as well. So if you are if you are around for that, can be you can participate as well. God bless you. Have a good night.